Wow. All right, sorry about that. Okay, thank you for coming to the school committee meeting tonight. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. So, I understand we're still we're having some technical problems, but we're going to work on that. And they've posted that uh, uh, to the audience at home that they're working on the fixing the broadcast. So, unfortunately, you'll be on tape delay <laughs> for your presentation. So, first comments from the community. Anybody here tonight that would like to address the school committee? Okay, seeing nobody, we will move on to Plymouth North High School student representative report. Isabel. Um, I'm losing my voice a little bit, so. Um, so the Plymouth North Open House is held on Thursday, September 29th from six to eight. So parents and guardians are invited to attend and learn more about their students' classes. And the class of 2017 should keep up to date with the Plymouth North yearbook and updates about that. Um, we will also have some college lunch vis visits this month. So we'll have representatives from colleges and universities. We'll have over 150 um, visiting colleges. So that will be going on throughout the month. And the varsity homecoming game is Friday, September 30th at 7 against Duxbury. And the, da the dance is the next day, Saturday, October 1st. And tickets are on sale now until September 23rd. And they're $15 or $12 with two canned goods. <coughs> Um, international testing, uh, national testing day is held on Wednesday, October 19th. So seniors will take the SATs and juniors and sophomores will take the PSATs. And Life Touch sports photos are on Friday, September 30th. And we'll also be having a uh, meeting about the ball for class rings on September 20th during K Block. Uh, senior College Planning and Financial Aid Night is held on Wednesday, October 5th from 6.30 to 8 at Plymouth South High School right here in the cafeteria. And we ask that eligible students are registered to vote for the upcoming election. And we have the 2017 Prudential Spirit of Community Award. And people who are el eligible should apply by November 8th. And we had seven Plymouth North students attend the Plymouth Walk to End Out Alzheimer's this past Saturday, so we'd like to thank those students. And then FASTA night is on Tuesday, October 25th from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Okay, thank you. Megan, for herself. All right, um, late buses started this week and go until 4.15, and we have a lot of students taking advantage of it. We have inaugural trip planning and meetings going on for AP US History, AP Literature, AP Psych, and Panther TV. Um, our open house is Thursday, October 6th at 7. All of our sports of other full games are in full swing. This Friday is picture day, and we also get the, our new student IDs that day, and it's also um, election days for freshman student council. September 13th was our ninth grade fair where we had presentations for all our school clubs and freshmen had the opportunity to sign up and it was very successful. Um, we, the students are getting excited for, by seeing the new progress from the field of the new school. And we also have a new acapella program starting with our new chorus teacher, Mr. Luisiana. And Mr. Fornishari wanted me to say this and this to reiterate that this will be the last um, school committee meeting in this cafetorium before the new building. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, both of you. <laughs> old business. I think all our old business is up to date. Anybody have anything they want to add to old business? Any updates? Yes, Dr. Sorensen. I, I have a question. Uh, It'll, actually, it's in the minutes tonight when we approve the minutes for our, our uh, all-day meeting that we had in August. Uh, one of the items on that, on those, uh, in those minutes, we haven't addressed, and that is the discussion of failing grades. 
uh, across the uh, across the secondary level uh, relative to you know those we know, you know what we're talking about relative to uh, uh, really very low grade first term and then the student feel, feels left out after that and we understand from the little bit of feedback that we received at the committee table that there's an argument on both sides of that so as far as I'm concerned that issue is still unfinished business and I guess my question is uh, is that going to come back to us at some time with a recommendation or are we going to have to any, any thoughts on that if I may um, I believe and we've had uh, a great deal of discussion around this topic for quite a long time. Sure um, we are going to work towards a recommendation for the school committee. Um, but as you brought up, Dr. Sorensen, it's very difficult for a student who may have had a really bad first semester. And um, you know, the, the issue that we were trying to resolve or, or actually put on a proposal was, is there a minimum failing grade? And that's one of the things that we want to bring forward is what we would recommend as what that would be. Um, so we will um, uh, have discussions and bring something to the table for recommendation. Thank you. Anything else in uh, old business? I think I'm just going through it really quick. I think we have everything pretty much up to date. Good. Everybody's okay. Go to the next. Any new business? Anybody want to bring up anything new? <laughs> I heard the no. <laughs> okay. All right then. Reports and proposals from the superintendent. You have a lot of news for us today. <clears throat> Two items to report on. One of them is lengthy and the other one is not so. Um, last week I had the opportunity. Uh, Tuesday I, I left for Plymouth, uh, actually for, um, for London. England. I went uh, uh, with, with a small delegation to um, the U.S. Ambassador's uh, home, uh, Mark Barkham, and uh, had the opportunity to meet with um, a, a large group of uh, organizers from um, from England, um, all the way from Birmingham to, to Plymouth, England, really looking at how we enhance the relationship that we have uh, heading towards 2020. Uh, we talked about some significant developments that we're working on in partnership um, with the school department in Plymouth 400, uh, as well as uh, our partners in, in Plymouth. Um, there, are, there are three main pieces that we are working on, but there are many, many more to come. I think um, the, 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 one of the most exciting uh, ones is this uh, uh, Mars unmanned ship. Uh, that's what it's called, right? the Mars? And um, it's, a, it's a ship that's actually going to be electronically controlled that can actually sail from England to, to the United States. So that's one thing that's work, that they're working on, and, and we, are, we are going to be involved with that. Um, and also the, 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 big, the biggest one, uh, size and actually and newsworthy, is uh, a Mayflower replica. So there is going to be a, a Mayflower replica uh, built. <clears throat> it's actually, they just rented uh, space in Harwich, England. Um, and they're actually going to start construction of uh, a ship. Um, it'll take two years to build, and they are working on building that, and um, they want uh, to have the opportunity to work with our students as they go through that process. And probably the latest one that is very exciting uh, for us, which is related to the Mayflower, is, um, is having um, a group of um, 3D modelers um, that work on um, some very high-end 3D virtual reality opportunities um, that are, this group is based out of Birmingham University in England. And what they want to do is that they came and visit us um, two days before I left to, um, actually the week before I left to, to England. Uh, and I met with them while I was there to look, um, to see if we had an interest in having our students help with that 3D design of um, this virtual reality model. And uh, after I took him through North, Dr. Camel and I took him through, uh, and I had an opportunity to meet with them there. Uh, they were extremely excited to invite our students here in Plymouth uh, to become involved in that, um, that design work and actually uh, work on it over a, a two-year period of time to, to have students become involved in that, in that process. Um, in addition, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, the U.S. Ambassador and 
we've arranged, uh, we will arrange in the, in the next uh, week to a month uh, a Skype uh, conference with him and some students from Plymouth to talk about um, uh, the school district, talk about our plans for the 400th and what we're going to be doing. Uh, so we're very excited for that opportunity. Uh, he actually uh, went to school in Lexington, Massachusetts, so um, that was a good connection that, that we had. And uh, a very um, influential um, in um, uh, the United Kingdom as far as policy and as far as what's happening between the United States and, and England. So that was a, a great opportunity. So it went by very quickly. Um, and I think we'll be hearing more from uh, Michelle Picararo from the 400th and also uh, Selectman Provenzano, uh, I'm sure, is going to report uh, tomorrow night at the Selectman's meeting on um, the discussions that we had. But it was very uh, interesting, and I believe that you will start seeing more and more opportunities that are going to be brought forth to our students. Um, and the last piece with that is <clears throat> Dr. Campbell and, Dr. and, uh, and uh, Mr. Capel are going to be working uh, once again to uh, assemble a chorus that will be going over uh, this next summer. Um, they'll be singing with uh, a large group of students from England. Um, so we'll be uh, planning that and more information will come to the school committee. Um, but it'll be a, a, a little different composure or composition of um, performers of different age groups to be able to represent um, the Plymouth and the 400th. So, um, it was pretty um, whirlwind opportunity, but I think it was um, uh, very fruitful as far as what we do uh, in the district and in the community for for the 400th. Uh, keep in mind that um, the uh, community of, of Plymouth and the and the country they have put together um, a, a large uh, contingent of of people that are very uh, motivated to um, have winning opportunities between uh, Plymouth, UK and, and Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, the community has uh, hired a full-time person in Plymouth, England to orchestrate the educational activities of uh, the 400th relationship. Uh, she will be traveling here um, the second week of November uh, al along with another partner that we've worked with in the past. So. Uh, every opportunity that we can get for you to converse and to be part of meetings with them. We'd love the opportunity for school committee to be part of that. So I will uh, inform you of what those dates are and uh, what the agenda will be like so you can actually hear more about what's happening in, in, in the UK. And the last uh, item I have is, I'm not sure how many of you noticed this um, past week in the Voyager Express had a little different look and feel. It's actually changed to a mo mobile version, so you can actually look at it on your smartphone. Uh, we're also converting um, the Voyager to be two articles or two features from, from schools opposed to multiple uh, features and less pictures, more content. Um, and also, um, we've also inserted uh, at, at the end of each school's uh, section, there's their social media links, so they can go right to Facebook, Twitter, and to the, fa the web page of each of our schools right on that email that'll go out every Friday. So um, I actually had the opportunity to, to, to look at it right when it came out and I, I thought it was much more um, user friendly and I, um, the, the data that we are collecting indicates that parents or users are actually using uh, smart technology, smartphones, a lot more than they are uh, desktop or laptop um, machines. Um, so we figured we better change our format so it wouldn't be so cumbersome to read. And we hope that it'll, uh, it'll make, uh, make a difference for us in the long run. So that's my report for tonight. What's going on? Yes. That's good. I'm glad that we're tracking the users like that and reacting to the volume. That's good. We, we actually um, do a great deal of analytic uh, uh, data review uh, through the mechanism that we use. and. Um, we actually, a couple of years ago, were, we were featured at Plymouth, the, the Voyager Express was featured in a white paper from this vendor that we used because we had one of the highest open rates that they've had. Um, but parents actually open the email they get, so it's pretty interesting. We, we actually click exactly where they go, what they like, what they don't like. Um, Emily Goon has really helped us to really um, uh, break, that, break that down to really figure out where uh, our, our best time to send this out and what people are spending their time on. Okay. Thank you. And you know, um, 
when you do take these trips, because the trips, I mean, you guys have got to see the pictures and stuff that go along with the trips. So should do a slide. Give us some slides and so for context and stuff. I, do, I definitely will. That'll be a whole meeting. Got the time. We only have one thing on the agenda. <laughs> okay. So, so it'd be good. Because some of the pictures you sent were very those, spectacular. Uh, I was a professional yeah. photographer, so it mean, wasn't from my phone. <laughs> Um, no correspondences today, right? No correspondence. And now we have our one program update for the night. We're, tonight we're at Plymouth South High for the last time for a school committee meeting. We'll be in the new digs the next time. So. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> um, it says a green light. You can hear me. So I did say, Meg, that would be a nice thing to say that it is the last time school committee will be here. And I'm uh, hoping next year when you take the uh, school committee on the road, you'll be in a small group seminar in the new school. So we love old South High School, but we're looking forward to the new mm. South High School. And, I, I heard this technical problem, so maybe we'll have that worked out by next year. <laughs> um, so I am um, Mark Fonashari. I'm the new principal of Plymouth South High School, if you didn't know who I am already. I was the vice principal last year, and, and now I'm the principal of this year. So there's been some changes with the uh, school council members. For example, Mrs. Fry has now moved up, so I am now the principal and running the show for the school council members. But I just want to review who's on the council and where we're at with members. Uh, Mr. James Hanner is the CVTE principal. Uh, Mr. Chris Baker is a community member. We had a parent step down, so I'm in the process of finding another parent. Uh, hopefully we'll have something uh, on open house. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Justin Kearney, a parent, and Mrs. Alicia Kearney, parent, who were on there last year. Uh, we have a teacher, Julie Osberg, social studies teacher. And uh, we, have, we have a spot for a teacher, as Mr. Rossetti to my left got promoted to a half administrator, teacher, part of our new look for this year. There's a lot of changes. Um, James Addison, a student who's on it last year. Um, Sarah Leary, who's a new student. Um, Caitlin Nutz, who's not here, who's not in school today. And Mr. Patrick Powers on the bottom was, was kind of an ad hoc member. So that's the status of the council right now. Um, and I'm working on filling all the spots. We've already set our monthly meetings. Um, I'm new to this clicker. Uh, so the school improvement plan status, this is the mid-cycle review. And I, I want to say thank you to Every, uh, the central office uh, for, my, my, for my transition, say thank you to my administrative team for this transition, and thank you to the council for um, you know, meeting with me and working with me as I transition to the, to the new principal. It's a it's, it's very interesting job, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad I'm here. I love this place, but you know, thanks to uh, Mrs. Fry for sitting down with me on many different items, and especially with the school council, because it is, is new to me. Um, so we're filling the new spots, like I said. We did have a brief school council meeting last week. We set dates uh, and times for the upcoming year. Um, it's all, all the work is aligned with NEASC, which we have a two year, not a two year, we have a report going on October 1st, which being finalized. Uh, and we're in the mid-cycle of the school improvement plan. So tonight we're going to share work done on what we've done so far and share goals for the future and any questions for you tonight. Um, uh, so the school improvement plan has three, three goals. Um, one of them is to continue the culture of success at Plymouth South High School. Um, if you walk around this school, the culture is the murals, the positive attitude, um, 
the way we are very, ha I think we're very happy we create that positive environment. Um, in addition, the number of the new CBT programs will be modified for the, for the, for the school upcoming year, next year. Uh, number two, enhance student understanding and involvement in their overall wellness that we're working on. We have reporting out what we did last year. And number three is re-engaging the disengaged student, and uh, Ms. Osberg will talk about that. Uh, goal number one is that continual culture of success to work ensure a smooth transition to the New South uh, in September. Um, as I work with Mrs. Fry, because she still works with the building committee uh, and the, the new school, it's, it's very interesting um, that moving this entire building and the, the atmosphere to the new school is kind of a, is, is a very important thing. We want people to walk in there and feel the same that they do here. And we've been working on many different things. And uh, one of the things we've been working on is the documentation and the submitted to the DEC for the new CVD programs, which Mr. Hanna can talk about. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mrs. Fry and I were fortunate to meet with representation from the Department of Vocational Technical Education at the DESC probably almost two and a half years ago to present to them the model that we'd like to uh, move forward with, with some of the constrictions that we had with uh, space. Um, as we all know, the MSBA was pretty specific about our square footage. So we came up with a couple different plans of which were some clustering models. Um, that also included us in, um, adding two programs that uh, will be presented to our liaison um, in the spring of this school year. And those programs are HVAC and medical assisting. Our goal is to use the space wisely and to create a construction cluster, an automotive technology cluster that will also branch off of the auto tech program and also add to that auto collision and repair. So two standalone in the sense of um, medical assisting by itself within the construction cluster, the HVAC, and that'll be with plumbing and carpentry. And then the transportation cluster, as I mentioned, the automotive technology and auto collision repair. The auto collision we've already started, and so that's not uh, going to be brand new that we've rolled that out here in the new building. All the documentation will be sent forward, including uh, to match our educational philosophy that Mrs. Fry presented to the MSBA. It will also match the requirements for uh, new program approval. And the biggest obstacle that we will have is to provide staffing. So we're confident that we will be able to move forward with, with that. And we expect an on-site review in the new building before November 1st of 2017. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. One of the other things that they've been working on in our CBTE that Mr. Baker has been closely working on is all the equipment's not going to be new uh, over at the new school. And Mr. Baker has been working with Mr. Hanner about how they're going to move, classify, and reuse equipment. So he's been working closely with that. Um, hello. Uh, basically, the, um, the equipment topic uh -huh. is um, going on since the very beginning. Uh, so it's all the equipment that's being reused and um, repurposed. Is, um, is already been identified in the very beginning of the process. At this stage in the game, that equipment is stuff that we're using currently in shops every day to teach kids. So it's not like we can just pick it up and stick it over to the side there. The, uh, the equipment has to be, um, at this stage, has all been identified. Um, we have a whole spreadsheet for where it's going and where it's gonna be placed. And they'll be using that pretty much up till the end of the school year. Um, so that equipment's all part of their uh, um, the, the training process now. Um, but it's all been identified and marked and, and um, uh, whatever services need to be done is all part of what we do anyways. Um, the reason we're able to take so much equipment with us is that we have done, uh, we try to do a really, really good job of servicing, maintaining, um, keeping stuff up to snuff. That's really part of our uh, coordinated program review when that's done through vocational um, through the chapter 74 um, process that equipment needs to be maintained and taken care of and, and um, logged. So um, all that equipment's marked and will be taken with us. 
as soon as some pieces come out that kids are done with certain cycles, if they're not going to be using it for the remainder of the school year, at that point we'll disconnect it, get it wrapped up, and do whatever service we need to do so it's ready to go. And um, that's pretty much what that process is, is about. Thank you, Mr. Baker. There's also a uh, timeline that I've worked with uh, Mrs. Fry and the, uh, some of the, the technology of, that some of the technology will be, be moved, but it's going to be right up until the end. Teachers are gonna be able to teach right up until we move. There's a plan that we've been worked on with uh, Mrs. Fry. So it's very deliberate what we're doing to make sure that everything, there's still teaching going on right up until we have to move out of Old South to New South. Um, one of the other things that is, uh, is going to be happening is the idea of keep bringing the culture of this school over to the new school. And part of that is through an art, art project that Mr. Frizzetti has been working closely with. Good evening. Um, I'm happy to report that you know, one of our main focuses in bringing the culture, we have a tremendous artistic culture here at Plymouth South High School that we're very proud of. And we have two um, art teachers, Mrs. Quinn and Mrs. White, working on a art sculpture that will hang in the grand staircase of the new building. Um, you know, it's, it's, going, it's going to harness the light that comes into the building. Um, you know, obviously it's, 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 no, um, it's no secret that one of the, one of the main focuses of, of the new school is going to be how much light we get. Um, there's some days that I come to work here at 6.30 and don't know what it looks like outside until I leave at 4. <laughs> so we're really excited about all the new light features at the new school. So this sculpture will, um, the, our teachers are working with the architects on the new building to ensure a hanging sculpture that will, that will harness light and really, you know, let our students' artistic abilities shine through and, and really make that, that grand staircase a, a focal part of our, of our new building. Um, I'm also happy to report that Panther TV and Adam Smith are starting a digital capture of Plymouth South High School um, with ideas from a student, I mean, a student and staff survey that we had here at the high school. It's important that we record everything that has really given this building you know, a life of its own. And, and so many things that, you know, although we're happy to move to the new building and we look forward to doing it, um, you know, starting in June, we start moving things over. But we're, you know, there's a lot of things that we want to take with us from this building, the culture, the people, and there's a lot of wonderful things that have hap happened here that we don't want to just forget about. So we have a, um, you know, a digital capture that's going to, you know, hopefully run on a loop in the new building, maybe in the main foyer. Um, so people that come into the building not only, you know, see our great, our great new facility, but also realize that, you know, we're not going to forget where we came from. A lot of, you know, a lot of people have done some great work here over the years, and we want to make sure that the work that was done here in this building and what makes this place so special, like this cafetorium, all of those, all of those memories come with us to the new school. So hopefully, um, you know, we're going, to, we're going to start doing that digital recapture very shortly. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to report that for you. Thank you, Mr. Frizzetti. Uh, one of the other things that came up in the meeting was talking about not only the hallways and all the artwork in the hallways, but some of the teachers have made their classrooms a, a unique place. Um, you know, some of the teachers don't have uh, windows, and they've created an uh, environment that is a positive uh, learning environment. So we also talked about getting into some of these classrooms and videotaping what's, what happened in these classrooms to transform them. Um, I just worked on this today, develop a student change committee. Uh, I reached out to the guidance counselors to have recommendations for people on a change committee. So that's in the process to talk about certain things we're gonna do this year through the students' views. Um, change is hard. Um, I've been here, I think, 23 years. Um, this is my second home. Um, and we're doing some intentional PD on Wednesdays, our first in-service. We're going to meet and we're going to discuss change and what people like about Plymouth South because there's a lot to like about this building um, and there's a lot of fear of a new home. I actually uh, went on Google and looked up um, when you're moving. 
a house move, certain t 10 things to make it easy. And a lot of it is just what we're going to do. You know, have a plan, uh, don't stress out, uh, clean up the clutter, uh, take an inventory. So it is like moving f um, from a house, but it's kind of in a bigger scale. Uh, so we're gonna start that on Wednesday, the, the, the PD. And one of the activities, as I'm sorry, I'm not keeping up. Um, one of the activities is um, different types of personalities deal with different types of change. And one of the activities, and we've done this activity before and it's, it's fitting for this, it's how we deal with uh, change. For example, I'm probably a North person, just let's do it. I'm, I'm all in, let, let, I'm, I'm happy to do it. But there are other personalities that um, might need to know a plan and go about it slow. So we're gonna do this activity this Wednesday to um, talk about how people can deal with this change and what we have to do. Um, we're also going to talk about um, what curriculum people need to take and, and, and stuff like that. So that's what our PD is on Wednesday. Um, goal number two is focused on uh, the overall wellness. And one of the things we did, um, I don't know if anybody got a chance to come and see him last year, was Chris Herring, very powerful speaker. Uh, he's been to South twice, and if you saw him the first time, you the second time was totally different than what he talked about the first time. And uh, we did have um, the parents, some of the parents show up, and I'd like them to talk about their experience seeing Chris Herring. Uh, we did attend. Um, it was a very powerful, emotional speech. The whole backstory of it's not going to happen to me, but it did, um, and how it affected his life, and more importantly, the life of everyone that came in contact with him. So it was a very, very good uh, presentation. Anything to add? Mm -hmm. While we were standing, like sitting in the audience, um, the one thing that I grabbed from it is all the students were captivated by him. And I think anybody who can do that is an amazing speaker. So they were taking something from it. And you could listen and you could hear different sounds and um, emotions being present. But his words were so amazingly powerful. Not only did it affect the students, it affected staff. So he, he just did some amazing things. Um, and just after his presentation was over and just talking and hearing other people, you know, talking about the event was just powerful. I think this is a, an amazing thing for our students and our children. Um, they need to hear about these life events and that it can happen to anybody. You can, you can be just, you know, an average person or you could be somebody who's an amazing, you know, athlete like he was and just something so simple like that can just completely turn your life upside down. And I think a lot of the students took something from this and um, I think it's a great way to have the kids hear from somebody else. So I really like that this occurred and I hope more events like this happen through the school. Uh, one of the things we did for Chris Herring is we couldn't put everyone in the gymnasium, but we did have a live feed to all the classrooms, so the entire student body saw it, and I think they got the same feeling even though they were in a classroom watching it live, and I think Sarah was in a classroom, and she's going to tell how, how it went with her and how she felt about it. Hi. So being a student, from the student perspective, I think Chris Herring was something that as a student I've never really seen before because from a very young age it's hammered in our heads you know not to do drugs but to a point that almost gets glazed over because you just hear it so many times throughout your life and I'm only 16 and it's still it's it's always in the back of your head but it's just it's said so much that you just it just gets glazed over so I think Chris Heron one of the most persuasive parts of his speech was that it he wasn't really trying to be persuasive he was just kind of telling his story and everybody was glued to his every single word everybody just was hanging on each and every word that came out of his mouth and i think that was why he was so persuasive he connected to the audience in a way that nobody's really connected to us before he talked a lot about his social life and how and it was almost identical to each and every students at the school he talked about his love for sports and being an athlete i think we all connect 
connected to that as well. So overall, I think Chris Heron did a great job simply because he was just a guy telling his story. And I think that was really, that meant a lot to each and every student. Thank you. Um, one of the, my, the goals is to look at uh, another speaker. I don't know if you've ever heard of Mike Smith, um, very powerful speaker. I'm um, trying to look into get Mike Smith to come and speak to the entire uh, student body. He's also, uh, he's, he's, he's a different type of speaker. He tells a story um, and, and what type of a person he is and what he became. The other thing that we, we did was we intentionally put out pro, uh, programs to parents. Uh, for example, The Secret Life of a Teen, If Only, Drugstore Theater, and Social Media Speaker that Dr. Maestas had. Um, I get things daily that I promote out to uh, the staff, students, and parents. Uh, I just went to uh, a PYDC meeting and uh, I got a lot of information that can go out now to parents about overall wellness and how the community has come together to try to make sure that th the teenagers are safe and getting the right message. Um, goal number three. Um, uh, I know a lot of people work really hard on goal number three. It's re-engaging the disengaged student. Um, and the data has shown that getting the student re-engaged in the freshman year is a pivotal year. Um, uh, Mr. LaRange, the freshman house uh, vice principal, has worked uh, closely with doing a lot of data research and doing things on re-engaging that student because he's learned that if you can get that freshman hooked their freshman year that school's important and, and make it happen, that it carries over to the rest of the career in high school. Mrs. Osberg, who's on the freshman academy, will, will discuss some of the things they do for the, the freshmen to keep them engaged. Hi, um, so like Mr. Fornishari said, I'm a social studies teacher on the Freshman Academy. I've been there, this is my seventh year now, so kind of am familiar with, very familiar with the ins and outs of, of what we do for the freshman students here. Um, a couple of things that have come up in the past few years, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that are, are on the newer side, um, Mr. Loranger has put in a strategies for success night um, for both parents and students to come. Um, we invite them to come to the school. And we have guidance counselors there. Mr. Hanna is there. Uh, we have um, Ms. Jen Duso, who is there, who does um, a lot of work with Aspen um, and kind of teaching the parents and the students um, the ins and outs of Aspen, um, just so that everybody is on the same page. Um, the teachers, the parents, um, the the students, we're, we're all on the same page, which hopefully and, and typically does lead to um, success. Um, we had, um, as Megan said earlier, a... Um, a, an assembly for the freshmen um, to come and check out all of the clubs that we have to offer at Plymouth South. And um, I thought that was kind of interesting um, to kind of see what different kids are gravitating towards. And, and you can often tell the athletes they wear their jerseys to school and things like that. So, so you don't worry about them so much being engaged in the school, but it's the kids who don't. And I thought this club fair was a really, really good way to show the kids who aren't interested in sports that you can still be involved in your school um, in different ways. I had one student um, come up to the freshman student council table and I asked if she was interested and she said, oh no, this isn't for me. And I said, oh well, did you find something that was? And she rattled off at least five different clubs that she was interested in going to. And I thought that was great. She knew who she was and she knew what she liked and, and she saw that Plymouth South had something for her. Um, the other thing here that was new last year, um, we had an assembly um, where uh, certain ninth grade students were invited to. Um, it's ninth grade students that the teachers had felt um, needed a little bit of a push um, getting their work done and getting it together um, their freshman year. Um, so they were invited to an assembly backstage and um, one of the most powerful things I think that came out of that um, was there was a senior student there who um, struggled their freshman year um, and then throughout her high school career got it together and she spoke to those students um, in a very direct way um, that I think got 
to the point, and I think that it's important to get a student like that um, for these for these kids um, because they can see like, oh, she was like me. I can do it too. Um, so I think that was a pretty positive thing um, overall. And I think just these small things, homework club is another thing um, that we do for the Freshman Academy. And I think it's just giving them the tools um, that they can then use their sophomore, junior, and senior year and showing them where, you know, if you do struggle, this is where you can go to help. And there is something here for you at, at South. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Osberg. There's a, a big focus on the freshmen, but we do not lose sight of the sophomores, the juniors, and the seniors. Uh, we have things that we have like CST with guidance and admin meet, and we talk about other students. Um, I like to take a hands-on approach with the kids because I, I, I love this place and I love the kids. And the other day, I just want to tell you that a guidance counselor said, you need to come see this student right away. It has He's already started with an attendance problem. And that's what's great about South, how we collaborate and people know certain people to go to, to talk to these kids. And I went and dropped whatever I was doing. I went and saw this student and I know him. And I said, we need to figure out to make sure you're coming to school and you're doing what you're supposed to do. And I left with a positive. He's like, Mr. Fonashari, I will do my best. But that's what I love about our school is it, it is a lot of focus on the freshmen, but as sophomores and juniors, uh, guidance counselors take a very, very positive role and will go seek out people to get the disengaged student engaged, whether it's a coach, whether it's Mr. Han or Mr. Baker or a teacher or an adjustment counselor. So it is very freshman focused, but it does not stop after freshman year. I think it becomes more individualized as they grow older and they get in different shops. Um, one of the things that if you, you uh, Dr. Sorens did talk about uh, old business was what happens is this personal individual goal setting meeting that Mr. Larangia does with students. And if you notice that this student um, has ha had a low grade and what he does is he meets with students and he gives them, hey, this is what you can do to pass for the year, this is what you can do to make it for the year. And he's very, very um, diligent about it. He meets with them, he gives them the information, he meets with them again. And it's that discussion that Dr. Sorensen, and I believe you, you, you had at your meeting about the, the low first term grade, that's always become a discussion because of students say, well, why try because Look at how bad I did first term. But uh, Mr. Larangia um, sits down with them, tells tell them that it's not lost, and he has great sex, success with that. Which, if you look at the ne next slide, is the grade nine retention data. And if you can look at how the data has progressed, with all the strategies that we've been put in place for freshman academy meetings, um, different seminars, that last year, uh, there were only four students that were retained. And by retained means is they went back to full, they're back on a team. Um, we have some students that don't make so sophomore status, but that might be 2.5 credits because they might have, uh, didn't pass PE or something like that. But last year, the Freshman Academy only had, f this year only had four retained. And that's what, the, because of the Freshman Academy model, what uh, Mr. Larangia does and what the teachers do, the guidance counselors and all the administrators. So that is um, a very good success. And I, I know Coach Larangia is going to try to make this year, he wants a zero up there. So I, I, I know him, so he'll probably, he'll probably get it done. <laughs> um, strategies for the future. Um, social media safety and appropriateness with students. I actually did, uh, I had to write my first letter to the parents and I spoke about this in the letter, talking about social media and you know, talk to your son or daughter because one click of the button can change lives forever. So we're working on different things for social media. Uh, electronic communication with students. Uh, it's very interesting that um, we communicate Teachers communicate, administrators communicate, but it seems that everyone has their own idea of, of what platform they want to use. Remind, email, blogs, Twitter. 
Uh, and we're starting thinking about how we can focus on maybe getting teachers to use only certain things. We wouldn't want to limit them, but it does get interesting how many students have different um, ways of communicating with teachers. Um, we're going to continue with our personal connection uh, with students through guidance, administrators, and teachers. I still, as a principal, am still doing an advisory. Uh, the advisory program is very important. Um, I did set it up so I have a co-teacher with me just in case, but I have the same kids for the last three years, um, and it's what we believe in here itself. I believe in the advisory program. I'll always have an advisory as administrator, uh, just to reconnect with the kids. Um, one of the last things we're going to talk about, and I left the best for last was James, is we transition to a new South Athletic field. and. Um, as things change around here, uh, student, um, the way students see things change. And we had, you know, we had a stadium I thought was very nice, but now it's uh, even nicer. And James is going to talk about that transition to the new stadium and, and what the environment and how the kids feel. <clears throat> Hello. Um, so as a player, I think the stadium's like, the new field in the stadium, it's like really complete now, because like last year we had um, grass and like that made like football games like really muddy and dirty and there's like some bumps that like you might roll your ankle on but now it's really consistent as a field and it's like really fresh and positive and I think players and coaches really enjoy the new uh, turf and I also believe that the community likes the whole new uh, complete stadium as well because Last or the opening football game, there's probably like a thousand five hundred people at the home opener. It was crazy, and so like it's really powerful to see how all the like the entire com uh, community comes together for like this one like unique event for the football team, and it, it means a lot because like it's based off like this new f field. It's like it's only a turf field, but it means so much. Actually, James, I didn't save you for last because I know Sarah wanted to talk about Sarah's on the dance team. And it's not just affecting athletics, what's going on out there. It's also dance and cheer. So I remember last year for the Thanksgiving game, the North First South Thanksgiving game that goes on every single year, it was... I don't want to say it was downpouring, but it was definitely drizzly. And, um, you know, when dirt gets wet, it turns to mud. And, of course, the North Dance Team and the South Dance Team were not prepared to stand on their tippy toes in mud. So half the times we were on our backs, and we got off the field, and we were all just covered in dirt. And so I can speak for everybody when I say it's a heck of a lot easier to be on turf and dance on turf and cheer on turf because it was just it was it was difficult last year so that's that's definitely a beneficial improvement thank you sarah i just want to say thank you to the parents thank you to, to the committee and do you have any questions Dr. Sorensen. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you the story behind the story on the turf. You don't just have turf. You have one of the highest quality turfs that are made. And the way that happened was we didn't have the money as a building committee, Mrs. Burgess and I sit on the building committee, to buy this top quality turf. And we got a letter from the manufacturer telling us halfway through the process that he was retooling his plant because he, he didn't want to make the inexpensive turf anymore. And he would offer us this high quality turf for just a small increase in price. And the building committee went for it. So it's not just turf, it's high quality turf. <laughs> uh, having, having served on the uh, uh, council for South last year, we spent a good deal of time talking about the disaffected student, the student who comes to school only because they have to. And you said a couple of things here tonight that I really feel near and dear to, that is reaching out to the student uh, through the clubs, reaching out to the student by meeting with somebody twice a week that it says right here, you know, in terms of the grade thing. This is the way, we all know this, this is the way to keep a student from dropping out at 16, by giving him a connection with somebody or some people. So I applaud you, keep it up, I think it's great work. Sorry about that. <laughs> Very good. And I'll just say, I mentioned this at our last meeting. I was at the uh, first game on the new field. And if you listen to the people sitting in the stands, 
the, the public loves it. You can just feel it. You can feel the energy and everything. So that's it's great. It was a great, uh, great day. And I'm glad that you're enjoying it so much. So it's all worth it when you hear that, right? Any other comments? Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fundraising, Dr. Campbell. Updates in your fundraising since last week, um, since it was posted on Wednesday. I will tell you that we have a stack of requests that have come in since it's been posted, so you can um, anticipate seeing a greater uh, amount of new fundraising requests in there for our next meeting. Very good. Great. Anybody have any questions or feedback? Ms. Hunt. Um, I just want to say I went to the Booster Club meeting this this week, and uh, it was great that um, they went through and reiterated all of the rules of fundraising, and it was good for me to hear that because you know we do get presented with it, and I know at least at North they were very very thorough with the rules and what had to be done, and they talked about the car washes and and the water shortage and. And just, just the rules in general, they reiterated about the coaches not taking money and, and only the parent reps. So I just, I appreciated being there and hearing it from the other side. You going to say something? No, I'm good. Want to, but you're not sure. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, sorry, I, as a fundraising side, I have a friend who, te who coaches at another school. And they did their car washes but they, they didn't do the car wash themselves they got coupons for a later date so I don't know if these ki if that's something that the teams might be able to do I don't know for, for the spring but that's just I, th I think that uh, many of those clubs were looking to do other okay. other uh, fundraising activities so I don't think they have a short of ideas okay. yeah okay I know soccer sent out a new one they canceled their yes. car wash and now they're yep. doing a bowling yep and one. I think we had two other car so, washes yeah. two on the list that have since come up with other ideas, but that is a good suggestion yeah. for the future. If we, Hopefully we don't have another water ban in the future, but near future. I closed my sheet, or th was there anything for candy sale, for like chocolate bars? Because I don't have any kids in the school system that I'm kind of hooked on them. Do you need some chocolate? The, the chocolate bars, I like the chocolate bars. <laughs> I bought like hundreds of them over the years, and I like them. There is. <laughs> There's volleyball. So anyway, somebody could hit. If they would come by the next meeting. I'm with North Volleyball. It's all right. There's some cookie fundraisers. Those are yummy, too. PYDC? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I kind of jumped there. Did anybody have any... Thing they wanted to report. We only met a, a week ago, but any meetings or anything attended that you want to give me any? Okay. PYDC. Uh, we don't have any family. Yeah, we had a meeting, They're meeting this Friday. Friday we had a right? meeting last Friday, no, so last, I'm sure. Oh, last Friday. Right. Oh, so I'm sure that the, the the notes from that meeting will be transcribed by the recorder and most likely will be on the next meeting agenda. Okay. Good. I, I do have something really quick. Jump right in, Ms. Uh, Hunt. I actually. Um, with another, I was volunteering at my son's college this weekend, and a former teacher of um, a Plymouth school teacher, Mrs. Franks, is now in charge of the Massa Massachusetts Maritime Academy Follow the Voyage. And I told her that I would mention it here um, for everybody to know that they do have a curriculum based around their C term. And Michelle, Ms. Badger might be able to talk more about it, but I did promise her that I would mention it at this meeting that she is now in charge of that for the entire school, that's her, her job. Um, and just to encourage all the teachers in the district to look into it, it's a great opportunity, especially with Plymouth being so close to Mass Maritime Academy, the cadets can go there and actually speak to the classes afterwards. So I just, like I said, I promised her that I would mention that after, after meeting with her this weekend. Very good. Huh? She's she's jumped in full with both feet to the parent. To the other day. She's an officer in the parents' <laughs> association. So she, but she is in charge of the um, 
Follow the Voyage, which is a really exciting program. Building committee. Did we meet? I made, I made it last week. Yep. <laughs> Not for another month. <laughs> Appointments, leaves of absence, and resignations. Yes. Mrs. Fry. Tonight, but we have three certificated appointments, three classified appointments, and four resignations. So it's a little lighter than it has been in the past, <laughs> past few good. weeks. Thank you. We're still going, though. <laughs> now, the homeschool, Dr. Maestas. Yes, tonight we have one homeschool plan that is on the agenda for school committee approval. It has been reviewed by Dr. Halpin's office, meets all the necessary guidelines for homeschooling education in Plymouth, and I recommend your approval tonight. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I move. We accept it. The, the, um, it has presented. Miss, and seconded by Dr. Sorensen. Yeah. Oh. Everybody sync if you're not synced. I don't see it. Stop at the screen. <laughs> you have to go on. The, go to the agenda. Gotta join the meeting. Yeah, are we at? Oh. Yeah, there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Everybody bothered. Wow, it worked. Very good. Accounts payable warrant, Ms. Badger. Where school committee members have provided with a copy with, with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and warrant for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the reports and accounts payable warrant S09-2216, dated September 22, 2016, in the amount of $570,635.84 as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Mrs. Burgess seconds it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. It's going to take a little while. <laughs> Got it. Got it? Yeah. Good. Everybody's Very good. Yeah. I did get half of you as voting with your hand, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just went right into the momentum of it. Yes, Dr. Sorensen, you are. Uh, it, it, the thought just crossed my mind that when we vote electronically, the viewers on TV don't know how we're voting. They, they see it. Well, well, wait, let me go on. Yes. They, they know how we vote after we vote. So if I'm going to vote no on something, it just feels like there's no dialogue. I guess, and I'm, no, I guess there would be dialogue, because I'm going to vote no on something. I'll speak up to yeah, it, but yeah. I don't have to speak up to it. Because I'll yeah. always ask for discussion. Yeah, OK, yeah. all right, yeah. OK, all right. <clears throat> Now, tonight, when there's technical difficulty, they're not seeing it. Yeah. So they don't know if that just passed. That did pass unanimously. School committee meeting that is, uh, that is uh, being recorded tonight will air tomorrow morning. OK, good. Okay, and then they will have a cycle on the list of when it will cycle through. Okay. Good. For all those folks that are hanging yes. out there just, <laughs> yes, just, just <laughs> waiting. waiting for it. <laughs> Okay, let's start through the minutes. Then we have uh, August 1st. Ms. Hunt? Um, I actually left during um, Ms. Backman's presentation, so I don't know if that needs to be noted or do I abstain from voting where I wasn't here for the whole time? Um, you don't have to abstain because you were here for the, most of the meeting, but. Um, Mrs. Dargy usually mentions that yeah. somebody departed, you know, left the meeting or something. So we might want to just make a note of that. That and there's just a really <clears throat> small typo in the beginning. There's a G missing from Long for Long Pond Road. Good Which Good paragraph? Literally long. Ah, long. Okay. Good <laughs> Very good. So then, do I have a motion? I'll move to accept the minutes with the corrected changes. Very good, and seconded by Ms. Badger. I'm not going to say it. And all vote. No discussion. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> if not, vote. It's breaking my rhythm. <laughs> we get it. And we can vote. 
Ms. Giselli? Late. Mm -hmm. Did you vote? Yeah. Oh, oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> Thank you. Now the minutes for August 6th, our retreat. Sure. Yes. Um, I note that uh, Ms. Mrs. Sersali wasn't yeah, I at the last, uh, that meeting, so she should have abstained from the vote. So we need to change that, that to an abstain. Chairman, we can actually revote that if you choose to. Sure. All right, let's back up. Now the uh, motion was made by Mrs. Hunt, correct? Mm -hmm. Seconded yep. by Mrs. Badger. Mrs. Badger. And I'm going to release it for a vote Two. again, so please vote your... Yeah. We're going to vote again. We're going to vote again on it. Okay. So everybody want to vote? There we go. Very good. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. And now August 6th, which was our retreat. Ms. Badger? I move that we approve the minutes as presented. And Mrs. Ms. Hunt second it. Any further discussion? Then we will vote. Takes us, there's like a little delay. Uh, I didn't see the results on that last one. No, I didn't. Uh, I, okay. Okay. Um, it's, it, I saw it. I saw it. That's good. If you saw it, it's good. Yep. Then um, now we're on the executive session for the retreat. Would they be accepted as presented? Thank you. Dr. Sorensen moves them. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Burgess. Any further discussion? Then let's vote. Oops. <laughs> Oops. No, I may have to get rid of this so I can vote. <laughs> Not so quick. Cool. Yes. There you go. There we go. Very good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that time we see. I just moved along too quickly. Yes, I'm here. Oh. There's a little <laughs> delay, I think. <laughs> You're getting out early. <laughs> Disposal of equipment, Dr. Maestas. Yes, tonight we have three um, uh, ice machines that have been discarded or uh, are here tonight to be discarded from Plymouth North High School. These are three ice machines that um, were um, found to have some defects in them, and they were actually producing ice that had some level of um, nasty, stuff. nasty stuff in it. Okay. So it was discoloring so the ice. They're taken offline? And yes, they're right. offline. Do we have? Um, were the machines brought over from the old Plymouth North, or were they purchased for the new school? And no, these were, these were actually machines that were uh, purchased when North opened, um, and the company that we um, was, that was spec'd and purchased uh, went out of business. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a motion? Um, Ms. Badger? We approve the discarding of these three ice machines. Do I second, Mr. Awesome. Morgan? Any further discussion? All those in favor, please vote electronically. <laughs> 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 there we go. Good. All right, next one. That was it? Wow. 802. 802, I think that's the earliest night for you, right? <laughs> okay. I promised you that there wouldn't be some all long nights, but. <laughs> 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 so without objection then we're adjourned. <laughs>